I have a provocative question. Why is the producer of the 6 o'clock news watching the writer of the 6 o'clock news write the 6 o'clock news? Because, Mr. Grant, since you made me a producer over a week ago, I just feel I should be doing something more. I didn't supervising somebody. Can't you give me some something to do? I don't care anything, how small or insignificant. Bye, guys. <laughs> okay, from now on, you can supervise Ted. <laughs> Welcome to your first command, General Custer. Say, the newsroom is certainly redolent of coffee this morning. It's what? And you call yourself a writer? <laughs> redolent. Redolent of coffee. It means it smells. Ted, what's the book? You and your vocabulary. I'm planning to work in a few words to every newscast, give a little class. What do you think of the idea, Mur? I think it's redolent, Ted. <laughs> We certainly didn't wait long to get ourselves a press agent, did we? What are you talking about, Sue Ann? This piece of puffery in the TV section. <laughs> New show appoints woman producer. I didn't see that. I'll bet. <laughs> With this promotion, Mary Richards becomes the most important woman at station WJM. <laughs> Someone around here certainly wasn't very reticent. <laughs> now, what's that supposed to mean? Reticent? Inclined to be silent? Ted, oh, come on. I know what the word means. Sue Ann, I didn't give them this story. Although I must say, it certainly is <laughs> accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mary, you sweet, innocent, naive, albeit ruthless child. <laughs> Mary, here's tonight's rundown. I put everything the way I want it. Bring me Marie's copy so I can approve it. Then see if you can get somebody up here to fix that squeak in my chair. Right. Mary, I know how busy a producer is. So here's a little tip. A dab of Mazzola oil on Lou's swivel, and he'll be sitting pretty. <laughs> well, I'm off. This afternoon, I'm doing my annual salute to fruit. <laughs> I have to go plump my prunes. <laughs> Here's one for you, Murray. What's superfluous? Me. Come well, in. Mr. Grant. Did you get something you... for the squeak in my chair? No, I didn't, Mr. Grant. I am not a chair squeak fixer. You got Murray's copy? No, no, I thought I would read Murray's copy. I'm the producer. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly why I made you my producer, Mary, to relieve me of that kind of chore. Yeah, and that's exactly what I want to talk to you about. I've got to tell you, you've been doing a terrific job. Well, thank you, Mr. Grant, but I don't think that you... I'm not much on compliments, but this whole past week, you've been just great. I mean it. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Grant, but I wonder you if you You don't know what know... it means to have someone you can lean on to step into a job like this, to take the worries off your shoulders. I'm one lucky guy. <laughs> well, that's really very nice of you to say, Mr. Grant. <laughs> you know what the big difference has been, Mary? Since you've been in charge here, nobody's come through my door to complain or to argue about anything. Wow, has that been great? <laughs> well, sure, yes, I can see where that would be a relief. Yeah, so I just want to say to you, Mary Richards, Thanks for doing the job so well. You're welcome, and, and thank you, Mr. <laughs> what just happened here? I sandbagged you. You came in here to gripe about something. I took the wind out of your sails. That's why I'm the executive producer. Yeah, and Mr. Grant, I'm the producer. I know I am, because I see my name on the credits of the show every night, but that's the only way anyone could tell. Okay. 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 I'll get you a sign for your desk. <laughs> Mr. Grant, I don't want a sign for my desk. I just want a chance to produce the 6 o'clock news, just to see if I can do it. All right. You got it. Tomorrow you do the whole show yourself. 
Mr. Grant, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate this. And Mr. Grant, I don't want you to worry about a thing. I am going to rise to the occasion. I'm going to make you so proud of me. <laughs> I'm going to get you some Mazzola oil for your chair. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is Edward Daniels with the 9 o'clock news. David Baker, the head of the United Nations Emergency Fund, said today he has received a $1 billion commitment from the United States. Hi, Hi there. This I hope we're not disturbing you. Safety. No, not at all. Come on in. Thank you. We got to dinner early tonight. We emphasize service at that restaurant. That's why I take her there. Even special orders. The girl just sings in the microphone. Hold the pickle. <laughs> hold the lettuce. I mean, hold it. <coughs> oh, I see you're watching Channel 3. Oh, yeah. They have a 9 o'clock newscast. Well, uh, it's always helpful to check the competition there. Hmm. Good laser, average voice, weak vocabulary. I'm just checking to see if there are any new stories since the 8 o'clock broadcast. Are you nervous about tomorrow, Mary? Oh, come on, George. Ed. I've been an associate producer for five years now, a producer for over a week, and... So I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know, Mayor, that I'm one guy you can count on tomorrow. Of course, after you have that first show under your belt, there are a few improvements I'd like to discuss with you. But in the meantime, we just stop by to wish you good luck and bring you some flowers. Oh, well, thank you. Un unfortunately, the florists are all closed this time of night. <laughs> uh, why don't you buy yourself something? <laughs> Oh, just a lot of stuff to make you look good as a producer. Uh-huh. Example, the uh, title of the show. The title of the 6 o'clock news? Oh, well, let's face it, Mayor. People tune in to watch yours truly. That's what it's all about. <laughs> the title of the show should be The Baxter Report. No, Ted. Ted, Mary can't go making a whole lot of changes right away. All right, all right, Mary. How about this, a new opening? An aerial shot of my car pulling up. I step out of the car, and I race up the stairs, a grim look of urgency on my face, and I race down the hall. You should think of those things before you leave the house. <laughs> we are leaving the opening exactly the way it's been. All right, all right, Mary, have it your way. I tried to help you, but you're too lazy to think big. Come on, Georgia. No, Ted. Mary needs moral support, and I'm staying for a while. All right, I'll pick you up in about an hour. Mary, let me tell you something. You know what you are? Lascivious. <laughs> lascivious? Why would Ted call me lascivious? Correction, that's lethargic. It's on the same page as lascivious. <laughs> would you like some coffee? Yes, thanks. Mary, don't worry about tomorrow. You're going to do fine. Oh, thanks, Georgette. Listen, you were sweet to stay. Boy, I'll tell you, times like these, I really miss Rhoda. I'll bet you do. What would Rhoda say if she were here? Oh, I don't know that it's anything that she'd say. She'd just listen, I guess. I'll listen. Pretend I'm Rhoda. Go ahead. Well, okay. I'm nervous. Really nervous, you know, about tomorrow. <clears throat> Worried that something could go wrong. This isn't going very well, is it? <laughs> Are you sure all Rhoda would do is just listen? Well, I guess about here is where Rhoda would have made a joke, you know, to sort of relieve the tension. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at jokes. <laughs> That's okay, I guess I'm just really tense about tomorrow. This priest is playing golf with this rabbi. <laughs> you, you don't have to do this. <laughs> I know another one about a fat lady and a duck. No, it's <laughs> not. Why? 
Well, Tokyo is five minutes slow. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's little things like that that cost them the war. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, man? I don't know. I just, I can't stay seated today. Somehow, I just don't feel a producer should be sitting. I just... Mary, if God didn't intend for producers to sit, he wouldn't have given them such big chairs. <laughs> I don't know, I just you know, feel I should be on my feet in case I have to deal with anything in a hurry. <laughs> At one o'clock in the afternoon? Come on, Mary, relax. After all, Lou was right in there. If any problem comes up, all you gotta no, do is you... No, Murray. If any problem comes up, I'll handle it. That's all. Hi, guys. Ted, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> I know you wouldn't care, Mary. I mean, what the heck, we don't punch a time clock around here. Well, the point is, Ted, if you get here on time for Mr. Grant, you can get here on time for me. That's... To do what? <laughs> Whatever it is that you do when you get here on time for Mr. Grant. <laughs> well, all right, Mary. But I think you're being a little punctilious. <laughs> Ted, that's it. You're going to give me that book, do I have to take it away from you? Oh, <laughs> uh, is Lou in, Mary? Uh, yes, he is. Oh. Uh, Mel, what, what did you want to see him about? Oh, I got this note that the producer wants some changes in the set. Oh, yes, well, I'm the producer now. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Mel? Yeah, I just want to see what Lou wants. Yeah, but see, I'm the one who wanted the sketches. You are? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh. <laughs> Did you know, Mel, that we haven't changed the basic set in five years? Oh. And also, I wanted to talk to you about wardrobe. Ted's blazer, I want to get rid of it. Oh. Yeah, preferably before he has time to take it off. <laughs> hey, Lou, you want to check the copy? Uh, yeah. Murray, give it to me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you mean. I just saw Lou uh, here. Lou, do you want to look like at the... these? Mary thinks the set should be changed. What for? The set's fine. Leave it alone. Mr. Grant. I thought I was the producer. That's right, Mary. Well, then why don't you let me do my job? <laughs> Mary, uh, the first thing you have to learn as a producer is not to have this sort of discussion with your executive producer in front of other people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure nobody heard. Uh, I certainly didn't. <laughs> Look, I'm really sorry, Mr. Grant, but you are not letting me do my job. All right. Go ahead. Do your job. You don't need any help? Fine. Well, no, wait. No, I never said that I didn't need help. Mr. Yes, Grant, you I did, just... Mary, and everybody heard you. Well, I certainly did. <laughs> you can do everything, Mary. Good for you. Lots of luck. You'll need it. Well, Mary, I guess that'll teach you to be bellicose. <laughs> so, Merck, we'll open with the Senate hearings, and we'll follow with the narcotics crackdown, and then the governor's conference, huh? Yeah, that sounds like a good lineup. Yeah, listen, I got one problem. We have 30 seconds at the end of the show. Now, which do you think is more important? The birth of the baby rhinoceros at the zoo or the California grape pickers strike? Well, it depends on whether you're a rhino or a wino. <laughs> well, so the inmates really are in charge of the asylum. Oh, Sue Ann, I had nothing to do with that article. Mary, believe me, I'm proud of the way you haven't been disheartened by those who murmur that you've sacrificed your femininity to your ambition. Actually, Sue Ann, I haven't heard anyone murmur that. Then I'm the first. <laughs> of course, meanwhile, the man you supplanted is sitting alone in the bar downstairs, destroying himself with cheap booze. How do you know that? I just bought him a drink. <laughs> well, carry on, Mary. I'll just watch. It should be fascinating to observe how the most important woman at Station WJM puts together a new show. All right, you want to watch? Go ahead, watch. Okay, Murray, I've decided we'll close with the baby wino. <laughs>
baby rhino. Hey, Mary, you didn't authorize any wardrobe changes, did you? Oh, well, no, Gus, I didn't. Uh, that is, Mel talked to me about them, and I, I said I Without would Without consulting about me? It. Holy cow, Mary, your director has to know about these things. Well, there is nothing to know about yet, Gus. I mean, nothing definite has been decided. Oh, yes, so. it has. He's got Ted wearing a black and white striped jacket, and he's putting checkered pants on a weatherman. Oh, well, no, I, ne I never authorized that. Holy no. Toledo, you can't use stripes. They strove on you, and checks bleed. Yeah, well, see, all I said was that I wanted a different look. That's all. Well, you got it. Holy Moses, <laughs> checks and stripes. Bleeding and strobing. <laughs> all right, Mary, I'll put my foot down. Do you all hear me? I'll put my foot down. Well, suit yourself, Ted. It's your mouth. <laughs> Mary, I'm not plugging any of these radical women's lip groups. Ted, come on. There's nothing radical about the daughters of the American Revolution. <laughs> I love watching you do the news, Mary. Okay, this is it. His creepy camera pushes have mucked up my designs once too often. Well, what, what seems to be the problem? Mary, will you tell this fascist he just can't tear down a new piece of set just because he doesn't like it? And will you tell this half-wit you can't use a mirror on the set? Is that so? Is that so? I saw a Fred Astaire picture last night and it was nothing but mirrors. Mirrors, as far as the eye could see. <laughs> I think I saw that picture. Isn't that the one where he danced? Holy... <laughs> this is a live TV show. A mirror would reflect the cameras. I adore watching you do the news, Mary. Cool it. That's right, all of you. Just cool it. This is neither the time nor the place to discuss this. Now, for today, everything's going to stay the way it is. Tomorrow morning, we'll have a production meeting here at 11 o'clock. You bring the designs and sketches which... I will discuss with you, okay? Okay? Okay. And if you want to come and watch, you come and watch. Any questions? <laughs> Not the way Lou would have handled it. Mary, Ted wants you to handle it the way Lou would have handled it. <laughs> Ted, how'd you like me to punch your face out? <laughs> I'm telling you, the greatest college football team of all time was Army 1944. Nebraska 1972. How do you say that, fella? Army had the greatest backfield it ever was. Nebraska 1972. Hi. Hello. Blanchard, Davis, Tucker. Eh? Nebraska 1972. Oh, oh, nothing, thank you. I just... Thought I'd come by and tell you that everything is okay in the newsroom. Oh, good. Look at the record. Unbeaten, untied, beat Notre Dame 59 to nothing, six All-Americans. I mean, I knew you'd be anxious to know that. Yeah, yeah. Glenn Davis set a touchdown record that still stands. And that's while he was dating Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> I knew you, you wanted to know, because, I mean, it is the first time that I ever ran the whole show myself. <laughs> yeah. Nebraska, 1972. Army, 1944. So, I'm really glad that I was able to set your mind at ease. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. That's, that's nice. Uh, so everything's all right, huh? Yeah, if I do say so myself, everything is all right. <laughs> You're not, uh, for example, uh, having trouble with Rollins? No! No. <laughs> Who's Rollins? The sound engineer. Ah. I thought you might be having some problems. No, no, everything's fine, just fine. Yeah. Good. Glad to hear that, Mary. Yeah. I am managing to get the news on without a hitch. <laughs> Good for you, Mary. Thanks. Mr. Grant, why did you think I might be having trouble with Rollins? Just a hunch. Okay. Mary. Yeah. That's Rollins. <laughs> and the 
Clean Air Committee praised Twin Cities residents for leaving private cars at home and making the quick transit bus program a big success. Why does Ted keep frowning? Well, he's mad at me because I wouldn't work any of his vocabulary words into the copy. Oh. It's wonderful, Mary. It's the best newscast I ever saw. Oh, thanks, Georgette. I hope they rerun it. <laughs> <laughs> Now a sad item. <laughs> Monsignor Walter O'Rourke is dead at 87. Until his retirement in 1958, Monsignor O'Rourke served the Twin Cities Diocese, where he was much beloved. Let me just say this. I didn't know the Monsignor personally, but I'll bet you he was never lethargic, rental, and bellicose or a <laughs> Ted Baxter saying good night and good news. At least he pronounced them right. Never mind, never mind. Here comes the good part. <laughs> Produced by Mary Richards. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the first time you've seen that? No, but it's the first time I believed it. <laughs> Congratulations, Mayor. Ah, <laughs> thanks, Murph. <laughs> Or maybe I should have shaken your hands. I hardly ever hug Lou. No, I like the hugging. <laughs> hey, I'm very impressed. It was a great show, a perfect show. Except for that one moment when Ted was reading the basketball scores yeah. and a voice from the sound booth yelled, Nebraska, 1972. Well, Mayor, what did you think of my performance? Ted, Mary produced tonight's show and she would like your opinion. Fair enough. Mary? I thought I was great. Thank you, Ted. Oh. Yeah, I wonder what Mr. Grant thought. If he watched the show. Oh, Murr, I hope he watched the show. Well, you know, Lou, if he liked it, he won't say a word. That's his highest praise. Nonsense, Murr. When I come off a newscast, he talks my ear off. Congratulations, Mary. Come in. Um, Mr. Grant, maybe I'm pressing my luck, but uh, what do you think? About the show? Yeah. What do you want me to say? That it was great? Sure. <laughs> Mary? You want to know about a great newscast? In 1966, I was working at a radio station in Chicago where there was this real smart aleck broadcaster. On election night, the other guys decided to fix him. As he started to read the returns, two of the guys took off his pants and set fire to them. <laughs> and Mary, I watched while that man broadcast those returns perfect. Now, that's a great newscast. And, and you just let that happen? You, you didn't help him? Sure, I helped him blow out his pants. <laughs> hey, what I'm saying is, don't expect superlatives from me. Anyway, producer, what do you care what I think? Your opinion is the only one that should be important to you. You're right. You are absolutely right. Yeah. And you want to know what I think? Hmm? I think I did a great job. I think I did a terrific job. Then that's all that matters, isn't it? Right you are. Hmm? <laughs> Mr. Grant, what'd you think of the show? <laughs> it didn't stink. Oh, thank you, Mr. Grant. Oh, thank you. No, no, no. Oh, thank you. How about this? We open on military seats, tanks, guns, planes, and cut to me in a khaki flak jacket. Ted, we are not going to change the opening of the show. Anyhow, I bet Ted can't say khaki flak jacket three times fast. I don't know why I waste my time on childish people. <laughs> khaki flak jacket, khaki flak jacket, khaki flak jacket. <laughs> Hey, 
Mary. Oh, this is a big night. The first time you produced a show all by yourself. Right. Yeah, that's a cause for celebration. Hey, it is. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll go have a drink. 